good morning everybody and welcome to this episode of Harv's vlog where you join me in Cologne, Germany and I'm here at Motor World which is a big sort of motor museum in Germany to have a look at a few cars but more importantly to have a look at the Michael Schumacher exhibition so I'm a big a, a Formula One fan and I grew up in the era of Michael Schumacher in the era of his dominance of Formula One, seven time world champion. Um, and in recent times, as you may or may not know, obviously he's not been in the best of health at all. But his family have put on a private collection at Motor World for, which basically consists of a lot of Michael Schumacher memorabilia, including his racing cars. So I'm here in Cologne for a few days and I couldn't, I couldn't miss the opportunity to come and have a look at these cars. So we're gonna go in, hopefully we'll be all right, taking some pictures and doing some filming. And then we're gonna have a look at some of the most amazing cars, racing cars the world's ever seen. So we've just walked in. It's free entry, which I think is pretty amazing. Um, and as you can see up there, the Michael Schumacher private collection is there. I think this is actually a collection that's been done by his, the Schumacher family, um, which is really, really cool. But before we go up and have a look at that, there's so many beautiful cars here. So I actually thought the Motor World was a museum, but I think it's more a sort of kind of auction area and also private car storage, because all these cars have prices on them. So I would imagine it's a very nice Ferrari there. Ferrari 250 GTE, 589,000 euros. Okay, bargain. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's actually a private, it looks like it's a private auction area and also private storage for certain clients. Because if I just swing the camera this way, you can see these boxes and the caliber of some of the cars that are in them. And it's got registration plates as well. Um, but yes, yeah, so I imagine that you can, if you own a specific vehicle, you can hire or rent a, rent a space and actually have it stored here, so it's nicely protected. Yeah, so if you look a bit higher up, there are some absolutely mega cars here. I think that is the front nose of what looks like a Lamborghini Aventador. Um, we've got a racing Porsche here, another Porsche there, Ford GT. which looks really, oh man, that's mega in person. <laughs> Ford GT, Aston Martin DB11, a new Vantage, an old Range Rover as well. Pretty cool. Some really, really, really amazing cars here. As soon as I walked in and I was sort of hit by the Schumacher, when I saw those Ferrari racing cars up there, I was besotted already. I can't believe I'm actually in the same room as those cars. <laughs> Even if they're models, they're still amazing to look at, but I'm not, I'm not sure that they are. But we'll find out when we go upstairs. Now, as you can see here, that is an old Honda Formula One car that's here in storage. I can't quite make up who the driver is. I can't actually see on the side. But this car here looks like a certain one of a certain Mr. Fernando Alonso's racing cars. Renault from I want to say 2005. Which, if it is, it, that's a world championship winning car. I can't. There's no writing on it. I can't quite see through the glass to see the driver. The driver name on it but i think it's a 2005 car and there's also a lamborghini under a cover there which is pretty amazing also a speedboat so anything with an engine really but you can see through the workshops there lamborghini service but yeah some pretty pretty amazing cars to behold if you can see just through there that looks like a Lamborghini Huracan in matte red, a matte metallic red. 
which could be quite interesting to uh, look at. But when we go up the stairs to the Schumacher collection, we'll be able to kind of see a bit more into these glass storage boxes. Um, but yeah, super sweet. So there's a Maserati, Maserati sorry, Marac, which if you remember an episode of Top Gear many, many years ago, they did a cheap car challenge where they bought a supercar for 10 grand and Jeremy Clarkson bought one of these. Thought he'd bought the SS model, which was one of the later rarer ones, which I don't think this is. I think, no, this is just a standard one. And uh, the engine blew up and it was only producing 80 horsepower. Um, but yeah, quite funny. Really, really cool Alpina 3 litre CS BMW in the traditional BMW racing colors. And I'm not the best at German, but I'm assuming P-O-R means price on request. That's an assumption, I don't know, but um, that must mean it's quite expensive. Another old Maserati there, 3500 GT from 1960. E-Type Jaguar, look at that. 1971 V12 Cabriolet still in my opinion the prettiest car ever made it's absolutely beautiful so it's proportions and it's styling it's just absolutely gorgeous so pretty Ferrari 365 GT which has reserve yet on it so we'll see someone's bought that or it's reserved for someone like Corvette Stingray C3 from 1972, only 35,000 euros. Hmm. I say only, I could afford it. And then there is a wide collection of Porsches here. But this is actually, I think this is actually a collection at an auction, so they're all for sale, which is pretty cool. It's BMW Z8 there has driven, not the one that was, but the, you, you may remember James Bond drove that in uh, The World Is Not Enough. It's the one that got cut in half. But yeah, you can just see lurking there. An old Michael Schumacher car. 2001, I think. Might be a bit later than that, actually, because it hasn't got, might be a bit later than that, but uh, we shall find out in a bit. But yeah, some really, really amazing cars here. I'm glad I've actually, I, I can't tell you how excited I actually am to be in here. It's amazing. So a lot of people know Michael Schumacher from racing in F1. But what some people don't know is that he actually, in 1991, raced, in Le, raced at Le Mans. And this is the car he did it in. And the Mercedes C11. Pretty awesome looking thing. I do think this is actually a model. I don't think this is the actual car. Um, it's got proper brakes in it. But just looking, it might be actually, I don't know. It's a bit difficult to tell from down here. Um, but yeah, awesome. A lot of people know obviously Michael Schumacher from his days at Ferrari. And then in the latter part of Formula One career, he was with Mercedes. But actually he did race with Mercedes in his younger days prior to even before he even got in a Formula One car. So yeah, that's uh, obviously a car collector's club here. Mark II Jaguar. Oh no, sorry, my mistake, not Mark II Jaguar. XK150 Jaguar. Beautiful looking thing. It was a really old car there. And so this place looks like it's actually a like work service as well for a lot of places. And there we go. A Michael Schumacher Benetton. You can even see if you look underneath. You can even see the bit of wood. <laughs> but yeah. Freaking awesome. Freaking awesome. So here we are in the Michael Schumacher private collection. And what you're looking at here is his Formula 3 car from 1989. 
So you can see he's always had a link with Mercedes, as you can see on the card just there. Um, a lot of people mainly know, obviously, Michael Schumacher from Ferrari, but he's been linked with Mercedes for quite a long time. And you can see here, that's his Formula Ford car and one of his go-karts. So really, really cool to see that sort of stuff right back in the day. But I just want to move around now. So this was his first car for Benetton in 1992. This is the 1992 Benetton car. And the one thing I think is really cool about cars of yesteryear is the liveries. So you can see their Camel cigarette sponsorship and cigarette advertising was a huge back in the day. You know, cigarette companies had all the money and the liveries on the cars became iconic. So, you know, you go back to any sort of motor racing, even the, you know, the Silk Cut Jag, John Player Special Lotuses, Marlboro obviously is massive in Formula One. But yeah, this was the first full season, I believe Michael Schumacher did in Formula One for Benetton. And um, yeah, it's so a powered by Ford engine. But yeah, really, really, really cool and then we move across here to what i believe is michael schumacher's 1995 benetton in which he won the world championship awesome 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 you see there mild seven but like i said again the liveries on these cars are just freaking awesome Absolutely freaking awesome. But yeah, really, really cool. And then if we move around to here, this is one of his Mercedes Formula One cars. So Michael Schumacher retired from Formula One uh, at the end of 2006, was his last season with Ferrari, and he decided to retire. And then in 2010, he came back to drive for Mercedes after Mercedes were bought out, uh, sorry, after Mercedes bought the Braun team. So 2009 Jensen Button won the World Championship. And then Mercedes bought out the company and then created what we have today in Formula One. But uh, they needed a driver with some sort of pedigree. So they got one Michael Schumacher. Not a bad driver to get, I suppose. Uh, but this is the 2010 Mercedes car. And it's just really like, you know, otherworldly to me to actually see these cars up close. Because I watch F1 on TV a lot. But, you know, to actually be in the presence of these cars is just something that I didn't think it's an opportunity I couldn't miss. You know, it's an opportunity I couldn't miss. So, yeah, really, really cool to see that. And then if we move over here, now this is a really, really interesting car. This is the 1991 uh, Jordan. Now the story is that one of the drivers, I can't, I can't remember for the life of me who, but fell unwell or was basically was unable to race on a Sunday and they needed a driver to come in. Obviously Michael Schumacher was doing well in other formulas and they got Michael Schumacher in the car and in his first qualifying he put the car 7th. First ever time driving an F1 car he qualified in 7th for the race and that just shows you just how amazing he was a driver. Um, well, unfortunately, when it came round to the race, I think his clutch went on the first lap, so he didn't even finish the race. But again, you know, awesome to see that. Awesome to see it. So the first Formula One car that Michael Schumacher ever raced. But you just look at the width of these cars. And it's just freaking awesome. Absolutely amazing. Again, liveries, seven up. I actually asked this question the other day. I have no idea why they called it 7-Up. But, well, if you know the answer, drop a comment below. Yeah, absolutely amazing. Move on to where Michael Schumacher really is probably globally well known for. His years with the Scuderia. His years with Ferrari. So this is the 1996 car, which by all accounts from what I know and what I remember, it wasn't actually the greatest car in the world. You see his design on the side pods there, it's really, really peculiar. You wouldn't even think that these days, but it just shows sort of the generations of the cars. But yeah, just freaking awesome to look at. So 
this was a 96 car, which he didn't win the World Championship because Damon Hill won the World Championship that year. But yeah, I like the bold wheels. Well, that's not really important, but I just like them. Yeah. So you've got there, as you can see in the background, you've got a collection of racing suits. For the years, including some of the special edition ones just there and there. We come round here to another one of his cars. So this is the 99 car. And just the difference you can see. Absolutely awesome. So you may notice that on these cars you can see the white panels here and that is where the Marlboro livery would be because I was but obviously now in recent times you cannot advertise cigarettes which okay fair enough but you know it's a racing car it's all right don't worry about it <laughs> people are more worried about the car than they are the livery put it that way but just the width of this thing I can't even begin to comprehend just how low and wide these cars were. And this one, I believe, had a three litre V10. I should just check on the thing. Oh, and conveniently, it's just brought it up. Yep, three litre V10, a proper engine. As you can probably gather, I'm not the biggest fan of 1.6 litre hybrids, but yeah, three litre V10. And this was the time period in which he was having some wicked dust-ups with Mika Hakkinen. Again, one of my favourite drivers of all time. But those two were really going at the limit against each other. You know, two, two drivers who are arguably as good as each other. And just the battles they were having on track were amazing. I always remember um, Spa, where they're coming up on a back mark. I think it was Ricardo Zonta. Schumacher goes down the left. Hakkinen goes down the right at the top of the straight. And literally, he's in the middle, bless him. And all of a sudden, Hakkinen manages to box Schumacher out and get in. Yeah, makes the hairs on the back of your neck stand up, that does. And then we move around here. And just one thing I want to point out, the amount of ones on the cars. You know, for those of you who don't know, Michael Schumacher won seven world championships. And back then, if you won the world championship, you had number one on your car. I don't know why they've got rid of that, but... So this is the 2001 car, again, with, I believe, a 3-litre V10. Uh, it'll change in a sec. No, nope, we'll wait for that one. But yeah, 3-litre. Yeah, 3-litre V10. But yeah, these are the actual cars. You can see, I don't know if you can really make it out on the camera, but if you come really close, you can see there where the, the wheel nuts are worn around where they've gone on. Um, but yeah, to be up close and see this detail is just freaking awesome. And I've said that a lot. And come round here, and you can see some mouldings of the seats, some raw mouldings there. There's some kind of sculpture here, which has been signed by loads of people. It is. I think it's just oh, I think it's just a gift celebrating when he won five world championships. Oh, there you go, as she says here. There you go, gift from his team. Collection of trophies. And then we come around here to another one of his cars. Now this is the 2002 car, three litre V10. Again, proper engine. But just, yeah. To be in the presence of these cars, I mean, I've only ever watched these on TV. To actually be in the presence of them is just absolutely amazing. So he won the, won the World Championship there. Won the World Championship here. As you can see, number one again. I'm just gonna bring you in so I can get a better shot here. You just... 
awesome, am I right? So this was 2002, and then we move around to the 2003 car. Again, so I think in this time period they did all run V10s and quickly from the 2001 car to the 2003 car, look at the difference in the design of the wheel nuts and how they go on. You know, you haven't just got a traditional nut design, you know, you've got a proper sort of engineered piece there. Um, yeah, so the livery stayed pretty much the same all through this time period. You can see the differences, you can see some more fins and stuff coming in just here. You know, as aerodynamics is always advancing. But yeah, quite, uh, quite amazing. You can see a little thing at the top here. Ferrari Constructors World Championship, World Champions. And then here, I think this is a car, this is the first car he ever drove from a video I've just seen. And there doesn't seem to be a plaque on it. It's a little Fiat 500. <laughs> Very cute. And then we move on to this one, which is, I can tell you in just a second, is this 2004 car. Again, oh, is that number one on there? But yeah. Just absolutely amazing. Absolutely freaking awesome. But yeah, to be to be in the presence of these cars is something that I never thought I'd ever see. And I could not be happier. Could not be happier. I'll just give you a quick overview shot of them all. I think I'd be right in saying, correct me if I'm wrong, because I, I can't quite see, but I, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this is the last world championship he won in 2004. Uh, 2005 was obviously um, Fernando Alonso won the world championship, which if you look down there, I'm not quite sure, but that, but that just there is Fernando Alonso's 2005 car, I think. Which is interesting that they've got that here, but I think it's the last, se the last year he won the world. Michael Schumacher won the world championship. Then uh, Fernando Alonso won 2005, 2006, and then so 2006 he left. Well, Michael Schumacher left Ferrari, um, as I said before, and then came back in 2010 to drive for Mercedes. Well, he retired. But yeah, absolutely breathtaking to be in the presence of these cars. And you can see here some FIA passes as well for his family. And that's the FIA passes, t shirts, earpieces, balaclavas, more earpieces. Order of Merit from Italy, Ambassador of San Marino. So it just shows you how important the guy was. Absolutely. So we've just come out of the, the main museum itself and this is the Motorworld V8 Hotel and I'm guessing this is private garages for people who are staying. So you can see there's a Bentley Mossad in there. I think that's better. Oh, actually I think it's all, all sort of down one thing, I'm not quite too sure. I see a light blue Lamborghini Huracan in there. Yeah, some really, really awesome cars around here. Awesome cars. Well, guys, that concludes, quite frankly, what has been an epic morning. 
you know, I grew up watching those cars on TV. I grew up watching Michael Schumacher on TV and to actually see those cars in the flesh and actually be near them is something I never thought I would do and an opportunity that I couldn't miss up. So as always guys, thank you very, very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed watching the video as much as I have enjoyed making it. And again, thank you very much for watching. I hope you're having a great weekend and I shall catch up with you all soon. Till next time.